This video, I mean this lesson, lesson 2, we'll talk about Rod OS uh, as a method to actually solve for stability. And uh, I'll just introduce you to the rules and make sure you remember what are the rules in, in the text we'll ask you. Then uh, we'll do examples and show the understandings and then do more examples. So in this lesson, it will be quite, um, seems to be less tedious but rather than, um, okay, anyway. So the purpose of it or raw power is actually to, to determine whether the stable is whether is the system stable. If you remember, uh, the tensor function is equals to the um, numerator divided by the denominator, and whatever thing that makes the denominator zero is called poles. Whatever thing that makes the numerator zero is called zero. And then um, what we're going to talk about most is actually for the denominator part, which is the poles. So if the poles is as equals as equals to zero. And we'll go to infinity, which is equal to one. So in order to to make sure you don't go to infinity, we have um one method is to actually determine whether is the system stable or not. So if you were to go to the last page, okay, <coughs> you can see that we actually have a range. Okay, to see whether um what value of k, okay, later we'll talk about it. What value of k will will be stable? Okay, if it's if the value of k is less than zero. So you will not be stable. So we make sure our k is more than zero. So this is one of the um, this is the key understanding. So you you are just gonna know the range. <coughs> but nonetheless, um, let's start out with um, the first the, the intro bar. So first and second order system. There will be for raw powers there is a um, different type of um solving method. The first if it's first and second order system, you Make sure all the coefficients are positive, meaning let's say you have a you can see AX is the denominator, right? So if the denominator typically is a polynomial. Okay. If it's not polynomial then I don't think you can use this, but in, in test normally they will give you this type of questions. I mean this type of polynomial. And then um, you just solve it, okay, you just solve it in terms of the coefficient. So make sure the coefficients are all um plus. If it's minus, then you can just say that it is not stable. Okay, so I repeat again. If the coefficient, let's say you know, see you can see everything is um plus. Okay, if if one of it is minus for the denominator, then um you can say that the the system is not stable. Okay, so this is a very key concept you have to go and take note. So for first and second order system, meaning um meaning up up to here. Okay, up to here, x because it's second order, right? So second order and first order, I mean for for let's say the first and second order system. Okay, okay, for order one. So this is the system for first order, for example. So there will be just one order only. So the so second order is x squared plus s plus one. And then third order will be s cubed plus x squared plus one. So I hope you understand. So just now as I say, um, what if it's minus? So let's say you have s squared plus maybe two s minus three. If you have a negative, this means um, it is unstable. You can straight away say that this system is unstable, and um, that's it. Okay, so this is a very key concept you need to understand. So let's head back to this portion over here, and then we talk about if it's first and second order, you the all the coefficients have to be um plus. If it's third order, all coefficients are all have to be positive, same as this. But we have a new rule, <coughs> which is that um. The a2, a1, okay, a2 and a1, if you multiply them together, has to be larger than a0, a. So what does this mean? Okay, so let's do an example for the other example. Okay, so you have a, you are given a transfer function g of s is equals to this equation. Okay, so from this, um, what you want to do first is actually to change it to a closed loop system. Okay, we have unity negative feedback. So you, as you remember, unity negative feedback is actually a closed loop um, system, okay, which is like a whole. So this is a unity feedback system, okay. Uh, negative unity because uh, you have a feedback that is negative, okay. If it's positive, then it's positive feedback system. Uh, unit positive unity, but nonetheless, all we're gonna do is actually unity from unity feedback system. So if you remember the closed loop 
equation we have we derived kgs over 1 plus kgs and the last lesson is a very important as i say so how are we going to apply this into our situation over here you know that this is a transfer function g of x so in this case this what well, this is the, the g of x that i'm talking about so you just sub it in into this equation okay so you can just straight away use this equation so as you can see k g of s is actually s plus 10 divided by s x plus 2 squared so this is kgs okay so divided by 1 plus kgs okay you may wonder um why <coughs> why k over here is um you know hold on uh. so from the just now the equation the transfer function is this one right you they actually there is a different form of um, um representing this closed loop function. The other form is actually just g of s divided by one plus g of s. Okay. So this g of s they actually include the k inside. So this is why um you know you multiply in the k. So this whole transfer function can be said that is k g s in a certain sense. Because the transfer function itself actually is this one only. But if you add in the controller, you have to um if you remember our um okay anyway so hold on wow so if you remember last time our transfer function is this one right g of s if you remember the um the example on the um stop energy okay so um this this thing we actually say that it's g of s and then this one is the controller k right so k g of s and then one plus k g s so in, in a certain sense, they actually sum the k together with the transfer function itself. But nonetheless, um, there will be there will be no k squared in a sense. So because let's say if 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 you were to use my formula k g s right, so in inside here is already k. So if you want to multiply k inside here, you will be like you know. So this is wrong. Okay, don't don't do that. Okay, if there is a k inside the transfer function, you just really use the k. So this whole thing will be like this thing over here. So you, if you want to use this you know, formula, also can. You can use this formula, also can. But you make sure you know, um, the k is actually, um, the controller itself. Unless you have two controllers, then, uh, typically in 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 your module, there are, there are only one controller that we're talking about. We're talking about simple system only. So make sure you have to be very very careful about that. So with this said, um, you know that the g of s, um, can be rewritten in terms of this closed loop unity, negative unity. So therefore, um, if you can see this portion over here, um, you will be able to bring GS, G of S divided by 1 plus G of S over here. And then you, you, you multiply S, S plus 2 square. Okay, you just multiply the whole equation by this denominator. You just bring 1, 1 will multiply by S, S plus square. And then this one will also multiply, you know, it's, it's, it's just a math. And then you can expand. When you expand, you you eventually get this this thing over here. So this denominator is pretty much our our important case. So we can we call this um this below denominator equation we call it a characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. So if so it's a very important term. Characteristic characteristic equation. So if they ask you to derive a characteristic equation for a close Close loop transfer function, you know, you have to derive this one. Okay. So, um, so the requirements, as we said earlier, the positive order is actually, um, everything has to be positive, right? All coefficients have to be positive. Third order system, all coefficients to be positive. While um, you have to meet this criteria. Okay. So we have to know which is a naught, which is a one, and which is a two, right? So. So let's take a look. So A naught in itself is, is a lower order. So if it's you know an A2 that means that it's second order, if it's A3 is third order. So this is one key concept we have to understand. So if there is zero order then it's a constant. If it's a one order then you have a sum S. Okay, there's a S. If there is a second order is S squared, the order S cube S cube. So um let's come back here. So you have the characteristic equation over here, right? So we can say that a three. Okay, so maybe I should write now. Okay, so I realized one mistake from the text itself is saying that a naught. Okay, so a one. So from the third order system, right? All coefficients has to be positive. 
and then a1 and a2, the coefficient of a1 and a2 has to be larger than a0 and a3, okay? So they actually miss out the true, so yeah. But anyway, let's explain. So from the equation as we derive from the closed loop, okay, gs over 1 plus gs, we have this equation over here. So um, for each of the a1, make sure they are actually yeah, okay, so the first thing you need to do is to see whether are they all positive. So they are all positive, and this is why we can continue to the second criterion. So we make sure that all k, okay, this is not being shown, okay, this is not. They did not explicitly describe that k has to be larger than 0, okay, they didn't describe. So they only say that all positive is larger than 0, but they didn't say k must be larger than 0. Uh, however, k must be larger than 0, okay, in order to make it um, stable. So therefore, um, with this, um, A1, okay, let's talk about A1 first. A1 is actually this one, that is the first order, okay, first order, there is one F over here, there is no square and everything, so it's first order. So first order has to be larger than zero, so therefore, the, the coefficient 4 plus K, K is large, should be larger than zero, and therefore, in order to be larger than zero, K has to be larger than minus 4, okay, in order to be zero. Okay, nonetheless, so let's say if k is minus 3, then you know minus 3 plus 4 is larger than is 1, so it's larger than 0. So um in this case, so this so you have to have um all your coefficient to weigh against whether it is larger than 0. So you have to write down this thing, you'll have marks over here, so please write down. So a0 is larger than 0. A0 is there is no s itself, okay? So zero order. So 10k is larger than 0. So 10k larger than 0, so um, k has to be larger than 0 in order to be larger than 0. And then we know that the third order system, the third order system states that um, you need to have a... Uh, where is my third order? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, over here, sorry. We have two, two systems, right? So we have just play away this one. We make sure that all coefficients are positive. Okay, all your coefficients are positive. And then we also check that all k's are, uh, if there is k, if there is k, k has to be larger than 0, we also check it out. So the next, the third one is actually to use this criterion, saying that a1, a2 is larger than a0 multiplied by a3. So we have a a1, a1 is this order, 4 plus k, which is over here, multiplied by a2, which is second order coefficient, 4, so we have 4. Um, times 4 plus k should be larger than larger than a0, a0 is 10k and then the coefficient for the third order is actually 1 so 10k times 1 so we do it up, you can eventually get k should be, must be smaller than 8 over 3 in order to be um, larger than um, this, this, this dude over here okay, so I hope you get what I mean so, so if you were to work out the math, okay, if I sub in a or 8 over 3, okay, if it's equal equals to 8 over 3, the result will be the same. So it is also so this is not um this is we don't want it to be equal to same because it has to know k has to be smaller than 8 over 3 in order for this to work. Okay, so it cannot be equal if it's equal it has to be have this line, right? So it's not equal, so 8 over 3 or sub in there equal, so um it will, it will fail. So therefore, you have to choose a smaller number. So let's say 7 over 3. So I choose a 7 over 3. So this is 7 over 3, right? So 4 times 7 over 3 is 8 over 3. And 4 times 4 is actually... I'm sorry, 4 times 4 is... 4 times 7 is actually... Okay, 4 times 4 is actually 16. So, so it's 25.3. Okay, we will be working out the math. So it's larger than... So if, let's say k is 7 over 3. So um, we will have... 70 over 3 and then 22.2. So if k is k must be smaller than 8 over 3 in order for for this equation to work. Okay, for in order um, for this portion here, which is a1, a2, to be larger than a0, a3. So you have, have must have this thing. If you want me to derive the meaning of it, I can't derive, so I'm, I'm very sorry. And nonetheless, you can use this um, method to actually solve for the whatever you want. So, um, give me a while. So, if you were to plot in terms of a number line, okay, with all these um, parameters, so k plus 4 has to be larger than 0, 
So in order for that, k have to be minus 4. Okay, so we, we are plotting a number line um, for when right, k is some values. Okay, so if k is larger than minus 4, okay, so this, this, this dot, if it's, if it's a hollow dot, okay, if it's a, you know, this dot is considered larger than, if it's like shaded, it goes larger or it goes to, I think. But anyway, so, um, just do this thing and then you just draw it out. You have k plus 4. So this is it. This is the range. k, whatever k is possible for it, for it to be, for k to be possible, it has to be larger than minus 4. So if, so whatever k goes to infinity also can, so this whole line goes to infinity. Okay. So, and as for this portion over here, 10 k, k has to be larger than 0. So we start from here. Has to be larger than zero, so that's why we have uh, this this dot over here. Okay, so therefore, um, if you were to go, so the time line, um, the number line itself will go to infinity. Also, so whatever k is larger than zero is okay. Okay, and then um, for okay, so minus four is actually over here. Uh, why well, I don't know why I put here, but anyway, so minus four is over here. So from here it actually goes down, and then um. So 8 over 3, k, k has to be smaller than 8 over 3. So therefore, um, has to be smaller. So same, same dot over here. And then, but instead of going negative, because you want your k to be smaller than this value, right? So you should be going to minus negative. So whatever thing that is, uh, whatever k that is smaller than 8 over 3, you can choose this. So if you still remember, our rules is that k has to be equals to 0. Okay, or larger than zero in order for the system to be actually not k equals to zero, but rather than k has to be larger than zero in order is is one of the rule. Okay, although it's not explicitly stated, but yeah, you should know. So k has to be larger than zero. So what is the range that we are we are more concerned of in this case? Okay, if you were to take a look, okay, um, we have zero. And eight over three, right? So this 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 portion here is larger than zero, yet smaller than eight over three. So if you were to write in terms of an interval, okay, if you write in terms of an interval, k is over here, right? So k has to be smaller than eight over three, but has to be larger than zero. Okay, so this is your range. So this is a very simple third order graph for it. Okay, we haven't finished yet. So next video I'll cover the second order rough over I mean first or first and second order rough over we'll go back because I straight away jump into here in order to explain why since you also know that AI because um third order has a has one more rule than first and second order. So I just jump in here first because um you'll cover you also cover first and second order stuff. So next video I'll just use the first and the second order um system as an example to to you know to strengthen your understanding. And then for higher order system, okay other than first, second and third, if it's fourth order and more, you have to use an array. Okay, so we'll talk about it in the next few videos. So I'll to so before I go I'll just need to summarize this. So if you have a in you have a rough um, equation you have to first set your transfer function into a closed loop negative unity, which is what I told you earlier. The, the gs one plus gs, okay. So otherwise k, okay. I've explained why whether you want to put a k or not, okay. So first thing you need to set this. Is, so you are given the equation, right? You are given that certain equation. And then you want to set it in terms of some, some, you know, this, this form. And then the next step is to actually determine whether what order is the system. So if it's third order, as, as, as just now we have seen, our highest, like, our highest order is actually third order, S cubed. So we use the top order, third order, um, solving method. And then to solve, um, we actually, um, use the criterion. We, we make sure that all coefficients are positive. Okay, all, all are positive, and then we make sure that k are all, um, larger than zeros. Okay, and we have, we have set all the, the, the relevant, um, criteria. Okay, 
knowing that um, A1, A2 has to also be larger than A0, A3. This one is one of the rules. Let me show that K is larger than 0. And then fourth, to determine what range of K will cause the system unstable, which, which is, we just did it. Okay, so we will give this range and say that if K is this, well, within this range, we are safe. Other, other than this range, um, the K will be, you know, the system will go haywire. So with this said, um, we will go to the next, next video. So I'll see you.